Who's that? And not now, Antoine. I've got to see my mother. Is he in there? No, he's away boozing. You can go in. Watch, please. <laughs> Lucette, what is it? Why have you come here? I had to come. I've got to talk to you. I can't leave the bar. Someone has to earn a living for Carlos. Not much longer, Memo. <laughs> Found anything? There's a red substance, a sort of resin in the dirt under the nails. Paint? Might be. Well, what do you know, Paul? Ah, May Gray. Fished up the head yet? No, I don't believe that it's in the canal at all. I think it's probably buried somewhere on a station cloakroom. It's a mate do with the torso and the arm. Come and have a look. Interesting. Aged about 50, I should say. Height 5 feet 10, weight 180 pounds. Tough customer. Not an easy victim. Curious. Hmm? Oh, you mean those marks in his stomach? No, there is a man at all, nine times out of ten. It's a woman, usually a girl. Looks as if it's been peppered by a 12 war, a long time ago. How long? Oh, I don't know, about 20 years. Hmm, might have been a countryman, eh? Yeah, could be. The other scar. Appendix, only four or five years old. Mm -hmm. There's no surgeon who performed the last operation, amateur. They have, they have disguised his skill, eh? Hmm. How long has he been in the water? Oh, 36 hours. Tell you better when we've done absorption tests. Say, so since Sunday night, eh? And how long dead? That I'll be able to tell you when we've looked into his stomach and see what he's eaten. Mm -hmm. Inspector, it's for you. Uh, take it, Torrance. What's the matter with him? No breakfast. Just as well, by the look of him. Dr. Ball. You find out something? The check slide is red sealing wax number five. We're looking at the stuff under his fingernails. And there are traces of earth and saltpeter. What's number five? Used for sealing wine bottles. Hmm. So he might be in the wine business, eh? Cellar man, something like that. Petrol, it's Luca. He wants to know if the diver's to carry on, huh? Oh, yes, and can the barge be moved because it's blocking the traffic? No, tell him to wait for me. Right. 
Doctor, what's the, uh, where are the newspapers that he was wrapped in? They're too sodden to tell us much. We might find something from the inner ones. Can you tell us what papers they are? Well, we might be able to do that for you, yes. Patron, and he wants to talk to you. Oh. Where is the car? Where are you? I'm in a bar near the cafe. Remember the fair-haired young man riding the bicycle with the delivery box? He's been seen hanging about again. Oh. Well, if you think the head is in the box, you better pick him up. I'll be over in 20 minutes. Oh, what are you doing here? Hi, Monsieur Bourguin. Morning, Maigret. Doctor. When did you hear about this? It's been a handout to the press? The scent of news. Have you identified the deceased? We know he's a man. No more. You know that I serve the provincial press. My deadline's earlier. You'll hear when the rest of your colleagues hear, thank you. All men are equal here, Bourguin. A grave delusion, Maigret. I can give you news for news. What? Your examining magistrate is Camellia. An excellent choice. Undoubtedly. And your news? Use your nose. Goodbye, Doc. See if you can find us the head. May Gray. A bargain's a bargain. Good type of man, but um, what would you? A peasant? Well, there's nothing more there. Have you looked the other end towards the lock? There's no current except when the lock opens. Uh, I'll go down again if you like. No, no, if you say there's nothing there. I know this canal like the back of my hand. All right, Luke, I can let the barge go and clear up here. Right. Now, that local inspector, what's his name? Javel. Javel. Have him search the empty buildings, waste ground, he'll know. You cover the left luggage offices. Now, I'll have to make a telephone call. Tell her answer like a drink. Get the taste of the post-mortem out of his mouth. Well, there's a bar just across the bridge, Patron. No telephone oh. there. Where did you phone from? Uh, just down the road. All right. Oh, uh, you've For your joy, His Honor Judge Gomelio is in charge of this case. A lucky day. All right. What about the barge? Who gave it permission to move on? I did, monsieur. It was blocking the canal. But the owners may have something to do with the crime. The owners, monsieur, were 30 miles up the canal, all accounted for. When the torso was put in the water, here it came on me. Well, you are continuing to look for the head. It's vital to identification. We are continuing to look, monsieur, but not in the canal. For heaven's sake, why not? Because, monsieur, I have formed the conclusion that the murderer may have come to the same conclusion about the head as you have yourself. Yes, monsieur. Certainly, monsieur. Naturally, as soon as I have anything further to report, without fail, monsieur. Yes. Patron, you take the ah. taste away. The wine's good here. Mmm, yes. Where do you get it? Not the warehouses. No. Mm. Patron, that boy with the bike, he's watching us. Get him. Do anything. Why did you run off then? Don't like the police. First time with the key, now we're here. What are you up to? Nothing I can look, can't I? Identity card. Antoine Christin, 34, four books, and my turn. Take a look in his box. Patrol. You know this bar? I live round the corner. Why were you watching? I wasn't watching, I was just passing. You deliver laundry here? No. Not of anyone else in the street? It's on my way to the Hotel Bonavent. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know the owners of this bar? What's their name? Callas, Omer Callas. It's up on the front. I don't know anybody. I was just passing. I saw the police and I stopped to look. What's wrong with that? All right, get moving and keep your nose out of trouble. Doris? Oh, my car. We'll keep that for a bit. Some wine, please. Here to join me. Oh, no, of course, not out to call you. You know, I think I can tell what region this wine comes from. Poitiers, huh? Yeah, it's got that touch of flint. Yeah. But the commune. No, I'd have to be more of an expert. What is a commune? Saint Aubin. Saint Aubin. You uh, bottle it yourself? My husband. Uh huh. He bottles it too, huh? Yes. Yeah, I like to talk to him. Why? He knows his wine. He's not here. Where is he? In Saint Aubin. Ah, buying the stuff. Eh? Been away long? Ten days. Where does he stay when he goes there? Oh, in the vineyards. Uh -huh. The peasants. You keep in touch? Why are you <laughs> Not even a telephone call. Telephone? They can hardly read or write. <laughs> he comes from that area, no? No. No, he's a countryman, I expect. Feels at home among the peasants. Ah, I'd be the same. You, you're from the city, I imagine. Huh? I'm from Caen. Caen? I'd have said further south. Well, he must trust you, madame. Leave you looking after the bar on your own. <laughs> Well, that's all sort of life. He goes off there, buys the stuff, brings it back, bottles it. Where would he do that? In the kitchen. Uh -huh. Then the job's done, and he can go off and spend the rest of the day playing billiards with his cronies, eh? Something like that. Since you know. Uh, that's what I'd like to do when I retire. Lonely life for you, though. How long have you been married? Oh, 17 years. Yeah. Any children? One. You're lucky. Boy? A daughter. Hmm. she be at school, huh? No. She's left home. In a job already? God, he starts soon now, don't they? Where is she? I don't know. We are not in touch. Ah. Well, I mustn't keep you. Not there's much custom. We police seem to drive it away. How much do I owe you, madame? Three flags. How about about the change? I'll be back. For some more of your excellent wine. <laughs> that my methods differ somewhat from those of other magistrates. Other magistrates leave me to get on with it, monsieur. I report when I have something. Whereas I prefer to be kept informed of a case as it progresses. That is the way I interpret my function, a help to the police and a safeguard to the um, accused. I do hope we're going to be able to work in harmony on this affair, Maigraine. So do I, monsieur. Devoutly. Mm. That being the case, perhaps you will be good enough to tell me your, your views on the investigation so far. Certainly, Monsieur Camillo. So far, they are precisely none. None? Hmm. We have nothing to hang a view on. But the body must have yielded some evidence. Still being examined. All we know so far is that the man was probably murdered on Sunday evening, uh, cut up, dumped in the canal, except for the head. He might have been a countryman. He might have been the owner of a bar. Well, surely that's a clue. Hmm. Several bars in Paris, Monsieur. Well, then this boy you picked up, you say he was acting suspiciously, let you let him go. We know where to find him, Monsieur. And as for acting suspiciously, 
Wouldn't you have watched a diver at his age? Mm. Well, what do you propose to do now? Routine, monsieur, just routine. An unpleasant case, Begley, unpleasant. I should like it cleared up quickly. And you will tell me of any new finding as soon as it comes in. I rely on you, Maigret. You may, Judge. Uh, oh, um, uh, uh, Maigret. Monsieur? Get regular meals. It's important for your work. I see, Doctor. About six. No later. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you. Yes. Thank you. You got it. Ah, pardon. No, goodbye. Bad? Hello, Wakeway. Yeah, I want beer and sandwiches from Brasserie Dauphine. What? Of course it's for me. What do you think? <laughs> Regular meals, huh? <laughs> Gumelio. Yeah. And yet, you know. I quite like him in a weird sort of way. Well, what's from Dr. Paul? Well, they finished the analysis on the stomach. They put the time of death at six o'clock, definitely not later. Any signs of alcoholism? Yes. Looking more like a bar owner every minute. What about the papers he's wrapped in? They're a mixed bunch, some Paris, some provincial. They're all badly damaged by water. Going to take time to identify them. Provincial, eh? Well, that fits. Might have been brought in by travelers, say, truck drivers, perhaps. That narrows the search a bit. Some place used by out-of-towners. There were a couple of drivers in the bar Calas when I found. It looks as though this case is going to be easy. Too easy. I don't like it. The first bar we go into, the man's missing. The woman's a secret drinker. Truck drivers use it. Look up. Ah, yes. Yes. Jean Vier from the Hotel de Ville. He's looking up the marriage certificate. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Omer Calas. Bon. Where? Boisson Cour, Touraine, 1913. Arlene, A L I N E, Franchot, Cannes, 1923. That all fits. All heads up. Right, Jean Vier. No, that's a lot. Thanks. Mm. Get on the police of Boisson Cour. Get what you can on Callas. Uh, you've already got the Saint Aubin police checking on him. Uh, yeah. And Javel looking for the head? Yes, Patron. Well, that's all we can do. I expect it will turn out to be a mare's nest. Regular meals, eh? Florence! What do you mean by pinching the car? I had to come back by Metro. But, Metro, he was on a bike. Oh, well, the boy. I followed him. First, he made a call from a phone kiosk, and then he went to a bar off the Boulevard Morin where he met a young woman and talked with her. Mm -hmm. Well, so he's got a girl. No, Lord? <laughs> no, Petron, because then I followed the girl. She uh, went back to St. Andre's Hospital. She's the secretary to the top surgeon, Professor Laveau, yeah. and her name is Lucette Callas. I think I make the trip to St. Andre's Hospital. <laughs> Regular meals. <laughs> <laughs> Except number 17. The doctor will operate tomorrow morning. I expect he wants to see the radiographs, so I'll get them sent round to his apartment tonight. Thank you. Come in. Miss Gallas? Well, who let you in? This is Professor Laveau's office. Chief Inspector Baker, a criminal justice. I believe your parents keep a bar in the Quai Valmy. Uh, Omer and Aline Callas. Do they? Why do you ask? Well, don't you know? I'm not in touch with my parents. What's happened? Well, it seems your father is missing. Missing? Hmm. He went away on a wine buying trip ten days ago and he hasn't returned. Has my mother complained? No, she seems to think it's quite normal. Oh, then why? Oh, how horrible. But uh, how do you know it's him? We don't, for certain, but perhaps you can help. 
you happen to know if he was ever operated on for appendicitis? Yes. When? About four years ago. Was that after you left home? No, that was three years ago. Uh-huh. And uh, you wouldn't happen to know if he had a curious set of marks across his stomach here? No, I don't know. How old are you, Miss Collette? Twenty. Uh, but what does that to do? Why did you leave home? Didn't you get on with your parents? Or did they not get on with each other? Yes, as far as I know. Always? Yes. How do you know? You weren't even sure where they lived. Are you sure you've never been back? Well, I... I sometimes went to see my mother. How often? Well, two or three times. Yeah. When you knew it was safe, when your father was away, through a boy called Christian. My father was a brute. Is that what you want to know? It helps. How long is it since you've seen your mother? I don't remember. Surely you must have known through Christian that your father was away all last week on a wine buying trip. Didn't you take the opportunity to visit your mother then? No. Not on Sunday, on your day off? I haven't been there for months. Pity. How long have you had this job, Miss Collette? A year. Your mother knows about it, of course? Yes. She's proud of you, huh? What is this to do? I mean, you don't even know that Callus is dead. Is that what you call him? Professor Lavaux's office. It's for you. Thank you. Luca? Patron, uh, two things. First, the police at Poitiers say Omer Callas was seen in saint Aubin in the middle of last week, but he hasn't been seen since Saturday night. Secondly, the police at Boissancourt say Omer was well known. He was the son of an innkeeper. He left in 1943 and hasn't been back. A bit of a lad. He was married, but playing around with the squire's daughter at the same time and got a peppering one night from the squire's shotgun right across the midriff. Conclusive? Conclusive. I'm going down to the Callas bar now. Tell the lab staff to stand by. They may be needed. What are you going to do? Try to find out what happened to your father on Sunday. Look, my mother had nothing to do with it. She couldn't. She's a good woman. I swear it. I think you're very like her, Miss Keller. You set up. I beg your pardon. Not at all. After all, it's your office, Dr. Lovo. I presume. They know. They know. I saw Lucette. It's all right. They don't know anything. Monsieur? Good afternoon. Is that your truck out there, Zenith Transport? Come far? Calais. Mm -hmm. We travel together. You regulars? Come here every day? Well, not every day. We work day on, day off. Are you here on Sunday? No. This place closes Sunday. Are you a regular, too? Depends what you mean. Have a drink. Where's she? Getting up some wine. Do you know her? I know the talk. Is that him in the canal? Would it surprise you? What are you after? Did they get on well together? Fine. She ran the bar. He went out and got boozed. Then he came back and knocked her about. Mm. What you call a loving couple. You give her any cause, but... Come on, she's not in your union. I wouldn't know. You've been a good boy, Antoine, but you must go away and you must stay away from here and from Lucette. She's not for you, not anymore. But...
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I was filling the bottle. Do you want some wine? I prefer a cognac. Will you join me? I have to look after the bar. Oh, I'm afraid I've had my usual effect on your customers, madam. Oh, sir, madam, I'm afraid I've got bad news for you. Your husband uh, did go to St. Bar last week. You'll find no trace of him since Saturday. I have to tell you that we think he may have been the person dragged out of the canal. You found them? No. There are several other points that make it almost certain. I see. On the other hand, I'm glad to be able to tell you that I found your daughter for you. She speaks of you with affection. You've spoken to her? Mm -hmm. She's done very well for herself, got a good position. I can understand that uh, you wanted her to shake off all this, had the chance in life that you never had. What I don't understand, madame, that you've been married 17 years, but she's at least 20. What are you trying to say? Isn't it obvious? Well, she resented my husband. They, they quarreled, and that's why she left home. Or was it because your husband treated you badly? No. Keep it very hot in here, don't you? Oh, it's the stove. And yet, you wear this scarf. These bruises are recent, aren't they? He did come back, didn't he? No. Madame. I've no wish to torment you. Tell me the truth. What happened on Sunday? Here they come. I think we're onto something. A suitcase left at Austerlitz Station, unclaimed since Sunday. How big? Well, big enough. Point it, it was left by a young man with fair hair wearing a leather jacket. Oh. Did your husband have a suitcase, madam? Well, I packed one for him before he left. I'd like you to go down to the station with Sergeant Ducar and identify one that he's found. It won't take long. He has a car. Very well. I'll uh, get my coat. It's not necessary. I got a warrant. I want to get her out of the way. Mercury? Patron, it's me, Talence. That delivery boy, he skipped. I've been watching his flat and been stuck outside here for hours. Bravo. Well, now you can unstick yourself and go along to the Zenith Transport Garage. It's in Rouge Map, just across the canal here. You'll find out which of their drivers was free on Sunday. Do you think you can do that? Oh, yes, Patron. Patron, what do I do when I find him? Patron? I'll look after the bar, madam. Prices are on the board. Oh, the stove may need a shovel. Rely on me. Why don't you put the handcuffs on me? No occurrence. Why are we waiting? See this? Yes. Know what it is? Saw. The meat saw. The blade's been clean, bright. Look. 
Look at this part, though. It's all rusty. Hasn't been cleaned for years. Come here. What do you see? Knives, forks, tin opener. All thrown in, higgledy-piggledy, all rusty. These drawers haven't been cleaned for years. So what? Come here. Look at these tiles. They've been scrubbed and scrubbed again. And the crevices between them have been picked out. Look here, the paintwork has been washed recently up as far as there. About as far as blood would splash. Hmm. You didn't do it. You'd have fainted. You're almost out already. I'm not. Oh? All right, pick up that saw. Go on, get hold of it. All right, she didn't do it either. She hasn't the strength. Now, oh, Antoine, who's the man? Come oh, on, there must be a man. She couldn't stand this life otherwise. Ah, the boy with the bike. Have you opened it yet? No, it's locked. Heavy, too. Is this your husband? She has identified him. Key? My husband has it. Screwdriver in the left-hand drawer. Now, oh, Antoine, is this the case you deposited on Sunday? At 9 p.m.? I've never seen it before. Stupid boy. Don't let them do it. They can't. It's illegal. Your husband's? Yes. Dirty. Been worn a week. So he did come back. Hmm? Now, will you tell me what happened on Sunday? Don't say anything. They've got to let you have a lawyer. Oh, I'm sorry. Luca, I've taken both headquarters. Are you arresting me? There's no formal charge, but the magistrate will want to talk to you. Both of you. This way, madame. And you. I'll wait for the lab, sir. <laughs> Madame, your silence cannot help you. We know now that your husband left saint Aubert on Saturday night. He got a lift in a truck that dropped him outside Paris early Sunday morning. From there, he must have found his own way home. Who saw him? No one, perhaps, madame, except yourself. Your bar does not open on Sundays. He did not come back. Why did you clean out your kitchen? I spilt some paint. All over the floor and up the walls. And why this sudden cleanliness? The rest of the house shows no sign of it. Come, 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 madame. Your husband returned unexpectedly and found you alone with this boy, Antoine Christin. Well, what happened? There was a jealous scene, a fight. One of you seized a weapon. It could have been in self-defense, and your husband lay dead. And then you had to remove the body and to make certain that it was not identified. You forced yourself to the terrible task of removing the head. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right, we can check the blood samples with Dr. Paul. No, in the morning. Doctor, I just had the boy's mother on the phone. She's very upset. Wants to know when he's coming back. Well, ask Camelia. She says he's a good boy. Swears he never left her side all day Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Aline's been lying, too. Huh? About where she was born. No trace of any family called Franchot in Caen. Now, why would she do that, huh? And perhaps Camelio will find out. How long is he going to be? He's had her in there now for three hours. Must be on to something to make him miss his dinner. She won't talk. Can't he see that? She's the kind who'll go to the guillotine with a secret. I've seen it. Why? Who is she silent for? Ah, maybe you're still here. Good. Oh, that's a strange woman, yet the case is so transparent. What good is her silence? She could plead self-defense. The jury might be convinced. Ah, well, I've decided to, con to, to charge her and the boy. Why the boy? Well, surely that's obvious. He was found hiding in her wardrobe. Oh, monsieur, if that's a crime, we shall have to arrest half the men in Paris. Maigret, you lack imagination. <laughs> you go. This is the classic situation. Lover, wife, husband returns unexpectedly. The boy admits it. He's in love with the daughter Lucette, monsieur. At least he was the childhood sweetheart until she moved off and bettered herself. Then he became the go-between, telling her how her mother was getting on, whether it was safe to visit her and so on. He'd still cut off his arm for her, but he faints at the word blood. 
Megre, you have a positive genius for dragging in irrelevant side issues. Why, this case is so simple, so open, victim, motive, method. I was prepared to compliment you on clearing it up so quickly. See, uh, <coughs> Megre, Toros, what news? Yeah? Good. Hold on to him. I'm coming right down. Thoras is holding a man called Dominic Pear. He's a truck driver and a regular user of the Bar Calas. I'm going down to bring him in. Well, what is the point of that? Point is, monsieur, that he admits to killing Calas. <laughs> She's alone in there. They can't prove anything as long as she doesn't speak. You must hang on. You must, Lucette. You've seen the papers. They have no doubt now that it's colours. My position may become a little delicate. Dr. Lavo, there is such a thing as professional honor. Now, Mr. Kerr, how long have you known Madame Calas? About uh, two years. You were a frequent visitor at the Calas Bar? I went there whenever I could get away from the job. And whenever Callas was away? Oh, he was away most afternoons. Drinking. Playing billiards. He used to get drunk and then he'd come back and he'd beat her up. You resented this? I love her. Did she accept your love? What were her feelings towards you? Very well, then we'll turn to the Sunday. What were your movements on that day? I was out with the truck. I came in from Orléans. What time did you leave there? About uh, four. You reached Paris? Uh, between uh, six and seven. Mm-hmm. Continue. Oh, I put the truck away and had something to eat in the canteen. And then I went straight over to the bar. I knew Callis was away buying wine. Uh, she let me in and uh, I stayed with her. How long? About uh, two hours. What did you do all that time? We talked. What about? I tried to persuade her to come away with me. Did she refuse? Yes. Mm. Did you ask her before? Yes. What reason did she give? She said she wouldn't leave him. Because she knew that he would follow, that it would be, would be impossible to escape from him while he was still alive. She said he was uh, her fate. Well, tell us what happened. Well, the husband returned unexpectedly and found you together. Well? Yes. Like you said. Well, tell us what happened. Well, he came at me and I hit him. He went down. I looked at him. He was dead. There was blood everywhere. I got her out of it and... And then I did what I had to do. And then I dumped the body in the canal. With the head? Well, I thought the police might find the body, but if there wasn't a head on it, they wouldn't be able to identify it. You better drag the man near the bridge at Condé. I was there on, on Monday. Yeah. <clears throat> you realize that what you've told us is a confession of murder? I did what I had to do. And she had nothing to do with it. I shall have further questions to ask you later. In the meantime... My next move will be to confront him with the woman. I don't believe this story of unrequited love. Uh, a few questions and she'll break down and admit the whole sordid business. Well, as you say, Judge, a classic situation. Yeah, exactly. The only trouble is he couldn't have killed him. Couldn't have killed him, but he's just admitted it. He did leave Orléans at four. We've checked on that. Now, the least time he could do the journey to Paris in is two hours. That's even driving like a French truck driver. 
In fact, he took over three. His worksheet showed he checked in at 7.13. He did have a meal in the canteen. We have witnesses to that. So, if he went to the Callas bar, he couldn't have been there before eight. And he says that Callas came in after two hours, by which time, according to Dr. Pohl, Callas had already been dead for four. So we need some more evidence, Judge. Is it Dr. Laveau we've been waiting to see you? Oh, good. Show him in. Right, Doctor. Will you come this way, please? Inspector Negre, I'd appreciate the chance of a word with you. Certainly. Sit down. <coughs> Thank you. This is a matter of peculiar delicacy, Inspector. I think you've guessed how I am concerned in this affair of Calas. Well, the police can put one and one together. Well, at the same time, I should like you to know that the position is not so irregular. Miss Calas and I have intended marriage. Intended? Well, this affair is tragic for Lucette, of course. It would also be disastrous in other directions if it should take a certain course. I see your difficulty. You wish to know whether to extricate yourself now or to wait until it's certain that her mother is going to be convicted. Hmm? She said nothing. By that, you can hardly expect me to answer. You must forgive me for troubling you. Not at all. Natural anxiety. One moment, Doctor. If your association with Lucette Calas should become public knowledge... It would be inconvenient. Yeah. But in fact, her mother knows, and she's very proud of it. She sees her daughter as the future wife of the celebrated surgeon. What if her father found out? He might uh, guess that the surgeon was only amusing himself, might be prepared to pay for his amusement. In my profession, we use a scalpel. In yours, I see a bludgeon. Good day, Inspector. There's something odd going on. I just had another call from the police at Boissoncourt. Don't tell me our corpse isn't Calas after all. No, but they say someone was down at Boissoncourt inquiring about Calas. Who? Your favorite newspaper man. Uga? Yes. Well, what's queer about that is a newspaper man looking for a story. Mm, but this was two weeks ago, ten days before Calas was killed. Was it? That reminds me. I owe Bourga some news. Pleasure. You can join me. Wait for another glass. On expenses, Burger? Gentlemen, wouldn't inquire. No, I am reproved. Business first. Remember our little chat? News for news. Would you fail to honor? I'm honoring it now. My first news is of a little visit to Boissancourt some two weeks ago by one Monsieur Bourguin to inquire after Omar Calas. Ah. Your turn. You pass? Very well, I have some more news of another little visit, also by one Monsieur Bourguin, this time to Lucette Calas. No. But you were seen, a man of your distinguished appearance, and both occasions before the death of Calas. You're wrong, Maigret, on one point. I didn't go to Boissancourt to inquire after Calas. I'd never heard of him at the time. What took you then? This. Boissancourt. The relatives of the lately deceased Honoré de Boissancourt I requested to get into touch with Maitre Comange, loyal to the estate. A nose for news, Maigret. And it led me right. De Boissancourt died very rich, with no known relatives but a daughter, Aline, who'd run away 20 years ago. Ah, the squire's daughter, eh? That's how Calas got peppered. As I quickly found out, and putting two and two together, I looked not for Boissancourt, but at Calas, in the palace directory. Uh, you're right, Bourgain. You have a nose for news, and where to sell it. Now, will you tell me why Dr. Laveau was so keen to pay to keep all this out of the papers? And when you reached the bar, you found Callas already dead. No, he found me there. I killed him. No, no, no. He was already dead. Killed by this woman's hand. I've told you, I killed him. No. I'll leave. No, no, thank you, Dominic. But you see, it's, it's useless. I'm glad you appreciate that, madame. Perhaps now we can have the truth. Well, he, uh, he came home at five o'clock. He found me neither with Dominique Père nor Antoine Christin, but alone. 
he'd been drinking on the way back. He was like a... He was horrible. He... He accused me of taking lovers while he'd been away. That was why he came back early, to surprise me. I couldn't reason with him. He... He seized me round the throat. I... I, I fought back. I, I grabbed the poker. I hit him. He... He died. So now, at last, we have it. Not quite, I think. You weren't really alone, were you, Aline de Boisancourt? We know the story. The only daughter of a proud, lonely man who hated you for not being a son. He treated you like a servant in the house, hardly spoke to you. So at last, despite him, you threw yourself at the only man there, Omer Calas, the son of an innkeeper and already married. When your father found out about this, he went after Calas in his own way, with a gun. But by then it was too late, because you had his child. What is all this? So you left. You cut yourself off. You came to Paris. You even changed your name. You waited three years for her last wife to die. And then he was free to marry you. But then you found out your mistake. You'd married a, a peasant, a cruel, drunken lout who sent his first wife to the grave. She had the best of the bargain. And now, monsieur, with your permission, I should like to interview another witness in your presence. Very well. Come in, please. No! You've no right to bring her here. I've confessed I did it. I killed him. Mama, it's all right. You'll see, it's all right. Sit down, please. When did you first hear of your mother's inheritance? From Monsieur Bouga. He said he was a reporter, and he showed me this advertisement by the lawyer. He said he'd reason to believe I might benefit from it. I denied it. I knew if my father heard of the money, it'd be the end of any chance of my mother's freedom. But I ran to her and showed her the paper, and we agreed that I should write to the lawyer. He replied, and I brought the letter to her on Sunday. I thought it was safe. Oh, I knew he was away, Antoine told me. But while I was there, he came back. What time is this? Oh, it must have been about five o'clock. I don't know. He was drunk and suspicious. He thought I'd brought money or something. He tore at the bag and found the letter. And then? My mother burnt it. She snatched it and put it in the stove and swore she'd renounce the money rather than let him touch it. He... He became mad. He attacked her. I thought he was going to kill her. I... I picked up the poker and... And then she made me go away. She made me swear I'd never speak of what had happened. She promised that no one would ever know my father had died. And then she waited by the body for Dominic Pear. As you say, Judge, a simple case. <laughs> I owe you an apology, Inspector. You tried to pump me. And you put a flea in my ear. But I had to, you see. Lucette was ready to confess, but I wanted to make sure it was absolutely necessary. We happen to love each other. No, I realize that now. What will happen? Lucette acted in her mother's defense. I don't think you need worry. And her mother? And Pear? My advice to you is to get a good lawyer. The best there is. I would suggest Maître Durand. He gets on excellently with Judge Camillo. 